My name is Toyan Ojora Saraki, and I'm the founder president of the Wellbeing Foundation Africa. Thank you. So Jeremy said today that uh, Peace Day is as much about violence in our homes and in our local communities as it is about violence on the international stage, wars between countries and civil war. Why do you think it's important for organizations dealing with domestic violence issues to unite their efforts on, on this day? Well, you know, it's absolutely correct that violence is any form of conflict. And at the end of the day, conflict does start in the home. Even the terrorists that you see all over the world, they didn't bring themselves onto this earth. They all have mothers. They all have sisters. Some of them even have children. And when we look at the issues of domestic violence, it's what I call the secret sin. Because it happens in so many families and so many communities around the world where women are just, and sometimes men actually, are not allowed to live with their own free will, with their own decisions, in peace and with respect and with dignity. So I just believe that this is something that the entire civil society around the world and the corporate sector and governments should unite and coalesce to try, even if it's just this one day in the year, we should all try and put our hands together and lay down our arms. Whether those arms are unkind words or unkind acts or physical violence or arms and ammunition, as we know it, we should all be able to just for one day just reflect, look at ourselves in the mirror and look at our fellow man and our neighbors and humanity and try and see what life would be like if we can just have peace for one day. And hopefully if we get to like it, we would have peace one day every day. And what kind of message do you think that might send out to the world? I think that as individuals and as organizations, if we can do this and we can achieve it, and I'm pretty sure that we can, I think it will make um, the leaders and the policy makers stop for a minute and think about how to do what they're doing better so that we can actually achieve world peace. You can't have growth without peace. There are many, many organizations worldwide that make their living on conflict, but they need to start thinking of other ways to make their living and work together to promote peace. And <coughs> excuse me, on, on behalf of your organization, what are you able to, what do you anticipate being able to do um, to reach out to your networks to, to um, uh, you know, in the region in which you represent in Africa to encourage engagement on Peace Day 2012? What physically are you able to do? Well, first of all, I believe that to really have a permanent transformation, we need to change the way we educate and enlighten people. So I'm going to be going back to look at our existing campaigns to see how we can better put the message across to educate and empower our women and children to realize that this they're not alone in these challenges and to find platforms through all our networks by which people can be educated, people can be empowered, and people can come together to also share their success stories on the particular day of the 21st of September, we're hoping to reach out through the different faith-based groups and huge networks of women's organizations. I would also like to catch the attention of the First Ladies of the African Union, because they also have their own peace mission, and see if we can join our hands together to amplify the message. But it's not just about giving a message. It's about making this message real and tangible in the homes of all the women that we want to reach in Africa. So if we can work together and make our voices very, very loud, I've already just secured a commitment from the World Association of Girl Guides and Scouts, 10 million Girl Guides and Scouts throughout the world, and they're also going to be joining us, whether online, in social media, in their own actions, on that 21st of September. And this is something that everyone can make their own little commitment read about peace one day, read about the global truth, and take your own decision that on the 21st of September 2012, you are going to lay down your arms, you're going to lay down your quarrels, you're going to lay down your arguments, and you're going to put your hands up for peace. 
And hopefully, I think we will have a movement that is going to inspire the world, hold the world accountable. Do you think that people will join in? Absolutely. Absolutely. Who doesn't want peace? I want peace. You want peace. We all want peace. Definitely. <clears throat> How important is raising awareness of domestic violence in the context of a, a global peace, a more sustainable peace? I think that a woman who's not living in peace and is not living in freedom will never ever be able to contribute her full quota to national development. And you know, women, they say the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. Traditionally, we're the caregivers. So if we don't face the challenge from the point of empowering women, we are going to be creating another cycle another generation of boys and men who don't realize that they actually have to take responsibilities for their own actions. And in the African perspective, this is not a question that is restricted to boys and men. In Africa, when you marry, you marry, you don't just marry the man, you marry the family. And so for us, we're going to try to be working with families whether you want to call them families in distress or whether you want to call them dysfunctional families, you can call them whatever you want to call them. But the, the challenge is universal and it requires a universal solution. And this is what we're going to try to be working with. We're going to be studying the models that have worked in other countries. And then we're not going to just try to adopt them just like that. We need to domesticate them to our own cultural traditions and our own regional norms to make sure that through that people find them easier to stomach and easier to adopt and therefore more sustainable. And this is the type of work that we're going to be doing. Mm. And <clears throat> this is a question that would elicit a, a lot, of, we could talk for hours about, but very briefly, what are the, what are the really key issues that within domestic violence that people face in Africa? We face certain issues that are universal. Very often the first instance of domestic violence occurs when a woman is pregnant. We don't know why this is so, but we do have a message that at five months the baby started kicking and at five months the father started kicking too. It could be because men are bracing themselves up to the increased financial challenge of looking after you know, a larger family. But I have always committed myself to the eradication of maternal and child mortality, you know, to, to stopping preventable deaths in pregnancy and in children under five. Africa is the most populous region in the world, and we also have the second highest figures of maternal mortality. So from my area of expertise, that is where I really believe a big difference will be made. We are now rolling out the personal health records, which is a record of every single intervention in a woman's pregnancy and in the health of a child under five. So we're writing in boxes and brackets where you can actually track if a woman has been subjected to domestic violence. We have a dearth of data in Africa. So for us to even deal with the problem, first of all, there's the problem of what each woman goes through. Then there's the problem of how many women are actually going through this. You know, how many women report it is different from how many women are going through it. And then even for the women to report, what is the framework on ground? What is the infrastructure on ground? for women to report these incidences? And would a woman who feels that there is no help available, would she leave her house to come and report? You know, people who are hopeless very often just suffer in silence. And I don't know if you've ever been to Africa before, mm -hmm. but the African woman is a different woman from, I think, women all over the world. The African woman, we will cry openly for things that are very small. We will cry openly for things that affect other people, but you, you would be hard pressed to find an African woman who is crying for herself because we have been taught from childhood to endure. 
An African woman is an enduring woman and an uncomplaining woman, but she's a woman who is always looking to find a solution. She's a woman who is always working while respecting her cultural tradition. And this can make her vulnerable because she might be suffering in silence. So we recognize that she, because of the traditions we have regarding loss of face and not bringing disgrace onto your family, we recognize that she may not want to speak out. But the fact that she's not speaking out doesn't mean that she shouldn't have a bridge or a pathway to how she can be helped or how she can help herself. And that's why I will always take it back to empowerment. You know, it's all very well to be helping people charitably, but you can't really go to sleep with a clear conscience until you know that people can help themselves. And this is what I'm trying to achieve. I want to find a bridge or a pathway or an infrastructure and back it up within the sectors, with the legislation, with the civil society, with the private sector, so that women can help themselves. So that even if we do, those who want to speak out, yes, speak out and raise your voice very loud. Those who don't want to speak out, they can speak out through surrogates like myself. But most importantly, we must find the solutions to help our women. <clears throat> By definition, a, a campaign to reduce domestic violence is about asking people to stop doing something, to yes. not do it. Yes. What is it that people can actively do on the 21st of September to support this campaign, do you think? Well, first of all, because um, for most of the world, domestic violence is something that men do to women. I think we need to raise the awareness with men. Men need to reject domestic violence. To echo the words of Baroness Scotland, men need to say, not in my name. Any man who is punching or kicking or being cruel or being wicked shouldn't do it in the name of men. They should do it in their own name and they should be ready to be named and shamed while we are going to rescue and empower the women. I think we need to look in our mirrors and I think we need to reject that deplorable behavior. And I think even some of the men that do it probably need help. I think governments need to put in frameworks to help these men, to stop them from doing it. Because I don't think that any rational, right-thinking man would really behave like that if they were given the time to stop and think. So I think we need to ask everybody in the world to stop and to think. Think about what you're doing. Think about how it impacts, you know, start in your home. Think about how it impacts on the people that live in your home with you. And then in your workplace. And then the stranger that you encounter on the street. And then you begin to look at workplace policies and what people really do with their lives. And if we can just all stop and think honestly and truthfully, I think we can eradicate this scourge. And do you think it's possible that we can see a world record for the largest reduction in, in violence on Peace Day 2012? Is that possible? Absolutely. I don't know what the record stands at the moment, but we will all be out there and we will be networking. And yes, let's start counting. I think we can. And what will you be doing on 21st of September 2012. At this point, I don't even know where I'm going to be <laughs> on the 21st of September 2012. But let me give you a prayer. I hope that on the 21st of September 2012, I hope I will be alive. I hope I will be in good health. And I hope that I will be able to retain the empowerment that I have to work on myself and the people closest to me and then the people further away from me and my global networks to be able to make sure that what I'm doing that day, I'm speaking out for peace, for tolerance, for complete eradication. I'm not one who does things by halves. So I'm not going to be looking for a reduction of this or a reduction of that. I'm looking for eradication of gender violence, eradication of maternal, newborn, and child mortality, eradication of war 
eradication of terrorism, eradication of wickedness, eradication of cruelty, and the promotion of peace one day and peace every day.